welcome to everyone to the third panel, Teachers in Focus. Uh, my name is Simon Muir and I'm a teaching fellow of Yiddish at the UCL Department of Hebrew and Jewish Studies. Um, each presenter uh, in this panel will have 20 minutes uh, for the talk, after which there will be about 10 minutes for questions. Uh, the questions should be posed in writing in the chat after the end of the talk. Um, I would like to remind you that the panel is being recorded. Um, I would now like to invite our first uh, speakers, uh, Vera Silva Sinha from University of East Anglia and Wayne Sampaio from uh, Universidade Federal de Rondonia. The title of their talk is Mother Tongue Language Education with Indigenous Teachers in Training, Project Asai. Vera and Veni, the floor is yours. Okay, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, my, I just want a ratification. I'm not that long guy anymore to UEA because my contracts ran out and they didn't renew. So I'm now an independent researcher so far <laughs> at the moment. So I go to share my PowerPoint. So hopefully everything here will be okay. Uh, all right. So I'll go to turn off my camera. How I do that? Wait a minute. Um, somehow I, I don't know how to do that. So when you start sharing, it's a bit tricky. So you may want to sort of switch it off before you um, start sharing if you... Yeah, so it's top. Oh, here. Yeah, I know now here. It's in the top. Yeah. Okay, great. You found okay. it. Yeah. Okay. So I stop the, the camera and you go to hear me. Hopefully you'll be... Um, yeah, I think everybody's, yeah, it's okay there. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so how I put this one down, I don't know. Okay. So my, my work uh, uh, is uh, what I go to do today. Vanessa Mpayo, uh, she's an apologist because she is in Brazil and Porto Velho and the place she, her house is, doesn't have much uh, reliable internet. So she tried everything and she couldn't get in. So, but I'm representing her here too. So, so this talk is about, uh, I, we go to report really, our work we have been doing for many years on Project Asai and, and Rondonia. And we go to, to share our experience with you, what we have been doing with that. Okay, so what is Project Asai? The Project Asai is a teacher training program, especially for indigenous school teachers, which focus primary years in indigenous school. It was created in 1997 by the State Department of Education of Rondonia. So uh, the majority of the staff who work in these in these project uh, lectures and professors and scholars from different disciplines from the, the local university, uh, which is uh, Federal University of Rondonia, UNI. So the program has been delivered for five times. Yeah, uh, we have been work uh, in three of them. So what we did developing and preparing teacher materials and teaching class in Portuguese language, mother tongue language, and in internship supervision. So these, these training um, could take place during the school holidays. Um, but the school holidays here is the indigenous school holidays, right? Um, and the, the, the indigenous the student to be a teacher come to the, the center and stay there for 40 days. After this period, they go back to their respective village and with a lot of things, activity to do, to develop. And all this time they stay in the village, they'll be supervised by a nominate mentor or mentors, depend off of the area they are working with. So after they finish that, that supervised um, training, the supervised uh, activity, 
they will create a report and this report have to be written yeah and these also will be used for a final portfolio what we call in english to be evaluated and then to give as a, a um a, the teacher qualification so the full teacher qualification training has four years of duration who attend all these students are nominated by the own community to become a full qualified teacher who will work in their respective communities or village so how the students are divided to do this uh, to be in this and uh, in the in this model so all activity are developed individually or in pairs or in small groups the groups are organized by language or close related language each class was composed of indigenous children from different ethnic linguist groups on average more than 25 mostly endangered language so the language of instruction in this case uh, uh, was portuguese because it is the common language known by all the students here's the list of language we work with in a given class we would have this number of language represented by the students so you can see tupi language is the largest group because in this area of Rondonia is the the concentration of Tupi language is, is the most characteristic from the region. But we have Pano, Nomiquara, Chapacura, also isolate language, Aikanan, Canoel, Canoe, and Jeromichi. So, how we do that? Uh, mother tongue language education, which is, um, is the model we teach there. Uh, we divide that in three in three steps, right? We call lingua materna one, which is mother language for lingua materna one, two, and three. So the method and approach we use, so the descriptive comparative methods and the structurally social interactionist approach are used. Um, how we do that? The descriptive comparative method used to study form a unit for each language yeah um and at this step and each stage of uh of this model the content was developed to enhance native speak teachers linguistic knowledge yeah not of but about the mother language or the mother tongues using the social interactionist approach enables to stimulate the students to interact with each other and share their unique culture and linguistic knowledge in classroom and this way all students can learn um vocabulary linguistic expression linguistic structure and cultures linguistic use of each language represent in the classroom this also enables us to promote a lively atmosphere uh, and the learning during the moment of sharing experience so the big goal here it was that by the end of the course each student would be equipped with necessary linguistic and cultural knowledge to adapt to their reality and their everyday teaching, empowering the identity, the language, and the cultural tradition as well documented. So how we implement that? Uh, oops, yeah. How we implement that? So the language Matan, we, we focus in oral tradition, right? So the students learn ways to promote participation in the school through oral tradition from the communities. And valuing the language and the storytellers, musician and all the cultural practice. So the big objectives here uh, during this stage, they should develop an understand of linguistic aspects such as phonological, grammatical, lexic, semantical. They should gain an understand of discursive structure, 
of the language situated in the oral language and social context. So it is important to say, even though this community transmit knowledge orally, there are different genres of speech and communication that follow a variety of formal roles in various linguistic contexts, such as rituals, traditional and formal meeting in different contexts, for example, in the school context with the community and this association representation. Well, they, when they talking about mythical narratives, historical narratives, only narrative of a fact or of event, self-narrative, chat between friends, family members, recipes, chants, prose and verse. Yeah, they have poems too. For each form of speech, there is a formal structure in which the speakers will be linguistic and culturally situated. So we use the dramatization technique. Sorry, this is a kind of a translation <laughs> from Portuguese, um, but that's the best way to understand that. Um, in a variety of way in different speech genres. So for example, we use, um, let's practice our, our oral language tradition to exercise our oral Orality and the mother tongue, we organize ourselves into language groups, use the dramatization technique. Each group simulate or simulate a different social situation, use the mother tongue uh, orally. So, for example, activity one, imagine that you are an indigenous leader and give a speech into your community. How you do that? Imagine that you are in a meeting in Brasilia. Brasilia is the capital of Brazil and everything is resolved there, representing your community. Talking about the needs and improvement of your village or health or education. Or imagine that you are narrating a myth of your culture to children at school. Or imagine that you are talking of your friend or work in the field. Imagine that you are talking to your wife or husband and sons um and daughters at your home yeah or imagining that you are talking to your or or yeah imagine that you are talking with your four wife or your friends in another situation so each activity is present by one or more person from each study group followed by a portuguese translation the common language and communication so we divide this activity and start in the classroom and each group we can imagine and we have i'm talking about 25 language right so they will go to choose one language for each situation and then you can and then we study the structure of this language in a general base so what we expect from that and we prove we had that yeah was when you talk in different situations, you have a different intonation, you have different vocabularies, you have different word meaning, speech act in different scenario. Each moment of speech, there is a speech act to a specific situation, different type of narrative, chanting in different scenarios, meeting house. Um, you have uh, uh, ways to perform in situations in a different linguistic and cultural context. Yeah? So students learn and develop oral discourse to work in classroom um, with emphasis and uh, in promoting the culture and the language revitalization to younger generation, for example. So they should be able to produce, yeah, with these knowledge to produce the didactic material to a specific situation. And they did that. They should also would have the skill and the knowledge necessary to implement the, the dramatization techniques to the language and, and culture context. So in this case, that's what we expect, what we got doing this oral tradition, um, Jesus in classroom and everyone was very engaged and involved and you see the result later. So in Lingo, Lingo Materna 2, we, we focus on written language. Yeah, so 
all the written language uh, focused on a textual production, um, looking at different discourse genre. For example, the main genre we work with was native, which event all or less chronological in space, for example, films, newspaper articles, novels, poem and music. And we work with procedure explanatory descriptive function genres, such as instruction, describe something or describe an object and any space. And also we work with uh, argumentative and persuasive discourse. Uh, ways how we write to influence some some something or persuasive way to write or to prove something that uh come with a point of view or idea or a defense of something so in this case the big learn objective we're looking here they should work with a variety of written discourse genres and learn the characteristic of each genre and the audience and social function yeah. At the end, they should. Huh? Five minutes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, uh, this was basic. Uh, we have a, a big scholar in Brazil called Marcos Bauta, and he worked with textual genre. So, everything was based on his, his methodology. So, um, the mother tongue, let's write, we wrote. That's the result. We produce a lot of mini books in different language and here it is the the result um lingua materna trace we we focus on grammar oh sorry there's an error there uh grammatical aspect was uh, also a way because remember these these are teachers go to to teach a language in their schools and uh we 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 focus on how to to suit to, to be a, a researcher and to be a teacher of the language structure. Um, and the learn outcome of that was to know what is a verb, norm, adjective, pronouns, preposition, a simple tradition of grammar is that, but with uh, some aspect of uh, culture situated. Um, so as a result of this work, uh, we have demonstrate way to document and promote cultural awareness about different indigenous language and culture in teaching training contests. The writing culture and language documentation materials are significant in this context because many communities have little or none in any case written text. At the end of the train, each student teacher would be equipped to adopt the linguistic knowledge to the culture and linguist reality and to work to promote and empower their language and culture traditions. We initiate an embryonic literary work with indigenous teachers. They were producing novels, poetry, and things like that. Uh, this work also stimulates the young indigenous teacher whose language are in danger of extinction to feel encouraged to research and record linguistic and cultural data from the community. The students were encouraged to discuss uh, their peers and create small craft books, what you saw, we call it small craft books because it's, uh, it's made at the school. And here, um, we also uh, produce, as a result of these many years of work, we produce two books with 500 words, uh, with uh, animals, body parts, season, and quantification. And Portuguese translation was used in the school because it was the, the, the way the another people who doesn't speak the same language can be interacting in the school. Two but minutes. In the, yeah, in the village, everybody speak their language and they teach in their language. Portuguese are not part of that. So here we produce these, the Projeto Sai book with the result of the student graphed books. And the thing I want to say very much here, interdisciplinar interdisciplinarity here is fundamental. And my work with Vanessa Sampaio, I'm an anthropologist and Vanessa uh, was make this, this work possible and to bring a good outcome. 
thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Vera. Um, we have now uh, time for questions. Um, I'll see the chat. Um, so there's um, a question from uh, Simona Scuri. Uh, could you um, unmute, unmute yourself and un ask the question and, and, and the camera if you wish to uh, so. Is I'm here already, yeah? Everything yes, uh, but the uh, person who wants to answer, uh, to um, ask the question. Oh, right, oh, Simone, okay. Yes. Hi, hi, Vera, thank you for hi. the speech. Thank you for, for everything. Um, a quick question is about the 25 languages that you quoted. Uh, mm -hmm. Are they totally or partially intelligible one to each other i mean do people uh, when when they worked in groups because you said ch children or students worked in groups uh, did they need an interpreter or do they understand one to each other even if there are uh, slightly differences in pronunciation lexicon and morphology yeah uh, okay uh, during the course, we try to put everybody together um, and a group by language group, which they could understand each other um, partially or fully. Yeah, but when it was not possible, we try to put more close related language because it's so a diversity language in the region. And this reflects and who I go to teach in the village. So, and these will be the future teachers. But inside that village is their only language and Portuguese really. But when they are training, we try to put everything together as close as possible. And Portuguese is the, 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 the common language in the classroom to train the teacher, not at the school in the village. Yeah? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And we have a, a question from Heather Sparling. Could you? Um, unmute yourself, put a video on if you want. Sure, so thank you very much. I was just very curious to know whether this was an additional option that, that teacher students had in their teacher certification program, or was it a choice that they made, like there was a choice that different teachers could make about what they specialized in. I'm particularly interested in knowing whether the teacher students um, agreed to take this on in addition to regular work i was thinking in particular of your 40 days during this during the uh, school break and also whether it's possible for already certified teachers to do this program as a kind of um, professional development or upgrading to their teacher certification yeah the project is i mother tongue language and the the it is a compulsory language that it is part of the curriculum and part of the syllabus, everybody needed to learn how to do to teach their language and other language. So it's really a compulsory thing. It's part of the core of Project Asai. Yeah, everybody has to do this this course. And they also, when these resources available, the 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 education sector would provide a extra curriculum, but at the moment it's not really the case. <laughs> And and are teachers able to who have not done this language training before? Can they come and do it later? Uh, not really. No, it's difficult because uh, uh, at the moment there's a lot of a political issue related to education, indigenous education, and indigenous in general. So, um, yeah, if you are choose to be in the project SAE, you do the full entire uh, training. But if you are not part of that, you can't come in. No. As far as I know, yeah. Um, we have a comment from Peter Austin. Would you like to say that? It's in the chat, uh, but if you would like to unmute yourself and... and... Oh, where, myself? <clears throat> no, oh. Peter. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Just a comment uh, to Vera. Thank you very much, Vera, for the um, for the presentation. It was really interesting. Um, mm. It reminded me of some projects that are being done in Mexico um, through CSS and there are Oaxaca in Oaxaca, the indigenous teacher training. Um, I just thought it might be interesting to compare 
uh, your, your work with that in um, that's going on in Mexico. Um, that's all. It wasn't a, it wasn't a serious uh, issue. Okay, thank you. I would like to know more later. Yeah, you can send me info. Um, and we have a question from uh, Christina Ringel. Uh, would you like to? Uh, yeah, hi. Um, thank you also for the talk. Uh, it also reminded me of something I was um, very happy to be an intern of, uh, which was also in Brazil, another program. I could send you some details if you like. Oh, yes, and in, in this program, I realized that some of the teachers were really learners of the language themselves. So in some cases, it, it was difficult for them to um, complete with all the uh, exercises. Uh, it was similar to the exercises that you presented. Is this different in your situation? Do all teachers have um, the proficiency required? Um, uh, the, the majority of, uh, of uh, teacher in the Project SAI, they are native speaker because they are chose by the community, right? So the only problem we have, and it was kind of a heartbreak to see some community, uh, 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 the, the language are dying, right? So when they see, because language has become his identity, right? And if you are in, the, in, in, a, in a group who language is the part of the identity to divide you in groups, when you don't have a language, it's quite hard to, to do that. And I have student breakdown in my, and when I was teaching, because of the, I find the student crying in the corner, said, I, I, I feel sorry because I don't have a language anymore. And then that's why we promote this embryonary thing. So let's go to see what you have out there in order to recover to your language. That's the kind of thing I, I witnessed in my experience. But the majority, everybody really are fluent and native in their language. So only the, the people are, the language is really dead, really, almost dead. So it's, that's the, the sad part. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, looks like we don't have any other questions. Uh, thank you, Vera. And uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for the questions and comments. And we will continue. Um, our second speaker will be Anna Burnley from Flegler College, uh, Tallahassee. Uh, the title of her talk is Understanding Desired Language Acquisition as a Pathway to Language Endangerment in the university education process of teachers in training. Um, Anna, the floor is yours. I'm just, um, hello everyone, this is Rita, not Anna. I'm just trying to find Anna. Uh, she doesn't appear to be in this room yet. Uh, so it might be, she might be in the break room, but we still have a few minutes, so it's, it's okay. So just uh, hold on for, for three minutes and we'll try and locate Anna. She was here earlier in this room, in this session. So I think that if she's left, it's probably was just for a minute and she'll be back. Okay, so we'll give it a couple of minutes. Oh, there she is. Anna, I can see you, your name on the list, so. And then share screen. Well, it took me back here when I did that. So Anna, we can hear you now. Um, the share screen is at the, at the bottom of the page. There we go, great. I'm beginning. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead Anna. Um, the chair okay. asked you to start, but then we couldn't find you for a moment. This is Rita, so do, do go ahead. And we can't hear you right now, not sure what's happened. So we could hear you earlier, but now the audio um, has stopped. 
Oh, and she can't hear us. Yeah. Try again if you test the audio, Anna. Hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Now we can. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> And is it advancing? No. So you may want to stop sharing and, and start over from the beginning. Yeah, and, and try again. And once again, we can't hear you. So I don't know whether you want to switch the video off so the audio works, that might might do it. I think, there right. is a, I think there's a check for changing to computer audio. You're trying to play your audio through your computer. Oh, yes. So you need that, that's, that should be an option when you're sharing your screen. So at the top, it'll say view options and then you'll be able to choose the, the um, the, the setting. That's why we can't hear you because it's a pre-recorded video. So it's good to just test it in the in the test room because you can get get help there. Whereas here um, it's harder. So stop sharing and uh, start sharing again. And then when you mm -hmm. start sharing again, it'll give you the option of um, um, something like access computer audio, or something like that. Isn't that right? Access computer audio. Yeah, you should say it somewhere at the, at the top and the in the options. If it's a pre-recorded uh, talk. Is there a computer sound? Did you find it? In US primary Yay. school okay. classrooms. Perfect, now it works. Now that you know a little bit about me, let's talk about the topic. We began with terminology. Since terminology may differ from one country to the next, I have included this glossary. In the US, English is viewed as the lingua franca, the commonly shared language. And it is the language that is taught in the schools. For our first definition, a student who is studying English as a new or added language can be referred to as a limited English proficiency student, or perhaps a culturally and linguistically diverse learner, or an English learner. I use English learner because it's considered to be an additive and positive term. The heritage or home language refers to the language the child speaks in the home or which is most often used in the home. The child may have varying levels of proficiency in the home language. For example, the child may be a better speaker and listener in the home language and may have little or no proficiency in reading or writing in the heritage language. The commonly shared language in the US is widely considered to be American English. 
American English is a variety of English and has multiple regional and social dialects, which are very, very well studied. American English is considered to be the desired language for the English learner to acquire. American English as the DL or desired language will be taught simultaneously with content. To compensate for the wide number of regional and social dialects of American English, schools teach standard American English, the SAE that you see on your screen. The SAE is the language of textbooks and classroom materials as well as official documents. An English learner like all U.S. children, will learn the standard American English. A pre-service teacher is a university student who is in training to become a kindergarten through 12th grade educator. In the U.S., schooling continues until the age of 18, which is 12th grade. A pre-service teacher might also be called a pre-service educator or a teacher in training. Language planning policy is the governmental regulation of language use. So now that we're familiar with the terminology, Let's turn our attention to the problem. So educators in training at the university level in the US may actually not fully realize that when they are teaching the CSL to their English learner students, they're actually replacing the student's heritage language with a foreign language. But Lily Wong Fillmore knew this and said this in 2000 when she was discussing English language acquisition as a secondary or added language in U.S. schools. And I just want to read that quote because I think it's foundational to what we're doing today. So here is Lily Wong Fillmore's quote. The dilemma facing immigrant children, however, may be viewed as less a problem of learning English than a primary language loss. While virtually all children who attend American schools learn English most of them are at risk of losing their primary languages as they do so. It is my understanding that the terminology used by Fillmore of primary language is an equivalency to heritage or home language. I became aware of the problem during classroom discussions with my students in applied linguistics. Anecdotally, I realized that my students were predominantly monolingual and that their belief, generally speaking, was that their future students would learn English and then English would replace the heritage language. And anecdotally, in classroom discussions, this did not 
seem to be a problem for my students, but it was a problem for me. So I wanted to learn more about pre-service teachers' perceptions of the loss of the heritage language for English learners. The privileging of standard American English over the heritage language was very well described by Fillmore in 2000, and I felt it deserved more attention. In my presentation, the loss of heritage language during second language acquisition in U.S. classrooms threatens the status of the heritage language and can lead to language endangerment or even language extinction if it is a lesser known language with fewer speakers to begin with. Given the diversity of immigration in the U.S., this is a considerable and very urgent issue. This paper focuses on changing perceptions of pre-service teachers as it relates to language endangerment. And in particular, the, to change perceptions about language endangerment by incorporating multiple teaching strategies in higher education classes for pre-service teachers. The strategies would seem appropriate to applied linguistics or perhaps ESOL methodologies classes. The literature notes that in part, or excuse me, that in the past, grandparents, parents, and children all spoke the heritage language following immigration. However, Language endangerment is now occurring at an accelerated pace, globally speaking, and this is in spite of the linguistic diversity found in the U.S. and noted by the U.S. Census. Fillmore also noted a particular triad of heritage language speakers was being diminished. The literature in the past noted that the grandparents, the parents, and the children would speak the heritage language. The grandparents, it seemed, would retain the heritage language. The parents would become bilingual in the heritage language and English. And then to the children, to a greater degree, would follow this path. Fillmore noted in 2000 that while the grandparents retained the heritage language, the parents were beginning to lose some of it while there was an increasing probability of the use of English in the home. And the children were almost exclusively speaking English. Anecdotally, I heard the same story this summer from a Nepali American friend who told me that among his friends in the U.S., persons who are also Nepali American, their children speak only English at home. They no longer speak any of the dozens of amazing and beautiful languages spoken in Nepal. Since pre-service teachers are in training to become educators, they are actually in a unique position to encourage the use of the heritage language among English learners. And so their professors can and should support them in this effort. We believe that professors teaching pre-service teachers are in a viable and important position to provide a response to the crisis of language endangerment and replacement of the heritage language. 
the literature does suggest that there are multiple responses available. From my research, I realized that these actionable responses are some that professors can utilize in the higher education setting to promote awareness among pre-service teachers of both the problem of language endangerment and the need to encourage and support English learners in using their heritage language while learning the commonly shared language, which in this case is English. I also found in my research that while there is a growing body of much needed qualitative research regarding the experiences of Indigenous persons training as pre-service teachers, persons who are also learning their own heritage language, there remains yet a paucity of research regarding specifically the perceptions of pre-service teachers who do not self-identify as Indigenous persons in the U.S. and subsequently their perceptions of the home language of the English learners they teach. Studies specific to the efficacy of utilizing teaching strategies to inform pre-service teachers about language endangerment are also sparse. Although performing research with pre-service teachers during a pandemic has proved to be fraught, the need for multiple responses can begin to be met in spite of the pandemic. So let's turn our attention to a few strategies. Today, we'll be sharing seven of the possible actionable responses that professors can use in the higher education setting. These are appropriate in face-to-face -face and remote classrooms. So I think that they'll be helpful to our audience today. In the first strategy, it's worth starting at the beginning. Pre-service teachers need to be introduced to their role in preserving the home language. This can be done um, fairly simply through sharing a video showing teachers who were previously English learners Five and grew up learning to speak the commonly shared language at school while also speaking their heritage language at home. The National Education Association does have videos such as this and there are many more available online. These videos can be played in the classroom or posted to the platform for remote learning. This can then be followed up with Fillmore's article with eliciting responses either whole class or through the discussion board about the need to include multiple languages in today's kindergarten through 12th grade classrooms with an emphasis on preservation of the heritage language. In our next strategy, we want to promote recognition of the benefits of plurilingualism among pre-service educators. If they don't understand why it's important, they're not as likely to promote the concept. The OELA has provided this visual in the form of an infographic. As discussions occur, either in a face-to-face -face classroom or through an online medium, 
students who are pre-service educators can note in their journals the benefits of plurilingualism or multilingualism. Then they can be tasked with creating their own poster or infographic containing all of the uh, benefits that they've been noting throughout the semester. And this can then be shared with the class either remotely or in a face-to-face -face setting. You have two minutes left. Additionally, pre-service educators need to understand social justice issues related to preservation and valuing of the heritage language. Small groups, either in a face-to-face -face classroom or remotely, can be tasked with reading digestible articles such as the two that are mentioned here. And uh, you can see the photograph goes with the second article called Mongolian Stage Rare Protest in China Against Plans to Remove, in this case, the heritage language from the schools. After reading an assortment of articles in their small groups, each group could then charge either using chart paper if it's a face-to-face -face classroom or charting through the so-called whiteboard feature of the online platform and then share their findings by verbally explaining them in a whole class setting. I think this works particularly well if you are teaching a synchronous class. Anecdotally, my own pre-service teacher students didn't really think, did not really ever consider language policy planning. But if students know what it is, they're more aware of it and more likely to understand the role of LPP as it relates to language endangerment. Your time is up. If you are in Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Um, I'll see if we have, um, we have a couple of minutes uh, time. Uh, are there any questions? Um, from the audience? There's one new message. Uh, Ari Sheriff, would you like to ask your question? You unmute yourself. Uh, yes, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, it's a shame uh, that you had such technical difficulties in the beginning, but I'm wondering, uh, uh, and I appreciated your methodical presentation of uh, your teacher education program. I am wondering, though, if you ever enter into discussions of language ideologies. You did indicate that you, why, for example, you like the uh, term English learner or English, uh, and I'm wondering if, and that would seem to indicate a certain ideology and would open up the conversation even with, uh, these are undergraduates, right? Uh, yes. Uh, 
So does that play a role at all um, or not? And maybe why not? So language ideologies, um, particularly where we're working in the US, do uh, determine the terminology, the vocabulary that we use when speaking about different learner populations. In this case, what we seem to be seeing is that there is um, a privileging, of course, of the standard American English. Um, we're also noting that that kind of ideology allows only a very narrow perception of the um, resultant language that can be applied after. So if we're using something like a quote unquote limited English proficiency to describe an English learner, then that ideology would seem to you know, suggest to me that we're really um, focusing on a deficit perception of the student in, in, um, in lieu of an actual additive perception of that student. I do think that the language ideology um, concept of how we describe English learners has a substantial impact on the way that pre-service teachers then um, begin to view English learners. Right, and, and you discuss that topic with your students? The topic Absolutely, Thanks. yes. Um, we have a question from um, Ugorji. Could you please unmute yourself and ask? I'm not sure I'm, I'm uh, pronouncing the name correctly. Uh, Ugorci, could you ask your question? So um, the question is, um, since SAE is a desired language and the medium of instruction, what is the implication of this practice to the vitality of other varieties of American English? That's an excellent question. And that go goes back to the privileging of standard American English over other varieties of English or even dialects of English that are regional or that are um, social dialects. So in terms of presenting this information to pre-service teachers, the concept of you know, what is a standard language and, and how does it really not exist in the real world has to be taught. Um, the students that I work with have been in school for a dozen years before they ever got to the university level and their belief tends to, to run along the lines of this is quote unquote proper English um, and their concept of proper English is always that it is the standard American English. It's not something they use in conversation. Um, something is happening. I think we are getting the screen sharing from the next um, talk. Um, you answered the question or not? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. I think yeah, we have to we have to um, uh, continue with the uh, next paper. Thank you, Anna. And thank, thanks thank for the you. questions. Um, our third and final um, speakers uh, will be Jacqueline Troy and Mujahid Torvali from University of Sydney. Uh, the title uh, of their talk is "Empowering Teachers and Students." Torvali Educational Practices and Learning Materials. Jacqueline and Mujahin, the floor is yours. Okay, hello, I'm going to start off, but Mujahid's going to share the um, PowerPoint. Um, Mujahid, have you got that up and ready to go? It was just up there a second ago. So, um, in starting, um, you will see on our screen an acknowledgement um, of the Indigenous community, the Gadigal people and other peoples that Sydney University has its uh, buildings built upon, the, the lands of those people. We always acknowledge 
that we, um, as myself, as an Aboriginal Australian, a Narugu woman from the Snowy Mountains of the Southeast, it's our practice to acknowledge that we um, conduct our scholarship on the countries of the Indigenous peoples of Australia at Sydney University. Um, Mujahid, of course, is from the north of Pakistan. He's from Sawat. And um, I acknowledge his community and he also does this. And um, we acknowledge the many peoples who are Indigenous that are in this um, community of Fell and our conference. And it's wonderful to be able to hear so many papers from so many different people talking about so many different Indigenous issues. Um, the last paper, I think, segues very well for us to our paper, where we are looking particularly at I guess the ramifications, um, in fact, many of the papers today have covered this, the ramifications of not paying attention to the, the, language, the home languages, particularly of Indigenous peoples, um, the consequences for those communities. And particularly in education, I've had a long um, experience of education in Australia, writing um, the Australian Curriculum for Languages, which is a a way in which to teach our own Australian languages through the framework for our Indigenous languages as part of that curriculum. And um, we have more and more of an emphasis on trying to keep what's left of our uh, Australian languages that are still strong going. Uh, we are a long way behind a place like Sawat where there are um, multiple local Indigenous languages uh, that could be very well supported, but aren't. In Australia, we've had some very strong bilingual education programs that were crueled by the system. In much the way we've just heard in the last paper, schools can contribute to devaluing home languages, indigenous languages, the languages that children grow up with. Mujahid has found that as a, as a Tawali person trying to teach in his own community, it's impossible to teach children who don't speak the national languages in those languages, surprise, surprise. This is the same experience in Australia, but in addition, we also find in Australia that by teaching Aboriginal students in their own language, even if it's in a renewal mode, so this, is, this could be a language like my own, Narugu, which has not been spoken probably for well over 100 years, but to, to even hear my own 18-year-old daughter, and now 18-year-old daughter, over the last few years grow in strength and her, in her own sense of identity, as she uses her own language, as I'm helping my community to renew the practice of using that language. Um, there are benefits in, in even our languages that are not spoken right through anymore being in, engaged in the education system. In Pakistan, um, Majid, have you got the PowerPoint up there? There's the first... Yeah, this, um... one. Hello? this one, can you, can you see the screen? Um, hey, I'm not. Rita, apologies. You put it up a little bit early, so I it down. So if you could share it again, I apologize. I'm I'm responsible for this this glitch. Yeah, we need we need the PowerPoint. <laughs> no, no, you need it. But it was up a little bit early, so I, I just. Yeah, yeah. It. Okay. So anyway, um, there is a there is a a slide before. I'm going to stop now. But there is a slide that we have at the beginning, and uh, you can't, still can't see it, but um, that explains um that in Pakistan in 2009, there was a, a national languages policy around education um, with a great vision of teaching, uh, of introducing indigenous languages into schools in um, Pakistan. So this is the national language policy of 2009. And um, it was to push back against this idea of divide and rule. Um, so getting everybody in Pakistan to only know the two national languages, Urdu and English, and only be educated in those languages. Um, even the 14 languages that are officially recognized as prov provincial languages were not getting very much airplay in schools in Pakistan. 10 years later in 2019, there was a, another attempt to develop a, a national uniform system of education and bring bringing into the system these um, indigenous languages, including the 14 strong prov provincial languages. Uh, once again, it's failing um, and, and most spectacularly failing the languages like Tawali. 
Mujahid's language. So he will now talk to this and our kind of joint interest for me to sadly have a comparative experience with North Pakistan that looks remarkably like what's going on in Australia as well. Thank you, Mujahid. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, this is, uh, can you hear me clearly? Yep, it's very Hello. clear. Yes, yes okay. very clear, okay. loud and clear. Yep. All right. So I did uh, 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 research on ground uh, with my student of my school. And here I will just uh, give you a short background, oral background of the entire area and language. Uh, Swat Kwestan and the Turwali Belt is a neglected area situated between Madian and Kalam. The Turwali Belt consists of four union councils, Bishigram, Bahrain, Balakot, and Mankia. Turwalis are uh, capitularly different from Pashtuns and other communities of Swat. The students of government high school where I did my research are Turwali and they speak Turwali language. Turwali is a Dardic language spoken in the Chiel and Bahrain valleys of Swat. Turwali has two, two dialects. The one is Chiel dialect and the one is Bahrain dialect. Turwalis are also called Kohistanis by the Swat Patan because of their habitat and lifestyle in the mountain. According to some surveys carried out by local national organizations and local researchers, the total population of Turwali community is uh, 180,000 uh, 1, uh, 180, uh, people living around the globe. So, uh, Swat and Pakistan. So you can see the map. The, the big one is Pakistan and then Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, the state or the province and then Swat. But in Swat, we got a very limited area up in the mountain. And the uh, background of village Kedam and Swat Pakistan, where I did my results. So here is the, the background of that village. Uh, the total population of Kedam village, where I am doing my research, I did my research is 600 household and the literacy rate is 10% in male and 1% in female. Those who can read and write simple sentences or text in Urdu, not in English or any other language. Arthur Wali, but only in Urdu. Urdu is the national language of Pakistan. The main reason behind the low literacy rate is poverty, uh, non-local teaching staff, and lack of educational institutions in the area. The people from the developed part of Swat appoint as teachers in the school, but after completing one year or so, they transfer themselves to the nearest school, and the school in Kedam remained vacant after that. There is only, there is one high school for boys and three primary school for girls in the entire Kedam Valley where I did my research. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you can see a picture of my school where I did my uh, research and where I am teaching currently. This is uh, a government high school, uh, government high school Kedam. So government high school Kedam is situated on the main Kalam Road, seven kilometers from the main Torwali town. Uh, there are five rooms uh, for classes, one staff room and an office for the headmaster. The total number of students in Kedam school is 210. 99% students in the school are Torwali and speak Torwali language. There are 16 sanctioned posts for teaching staff, but unfortunately, there are only eight teachers and 12 posts are vacant. 80% teachers are non-Torwali and speak Pashto. So this is uh, what happening with the indigenous people of Pakistan. Majority of the students in high school don't know Pashto, while most of uh, the time Pashtun teachers teach them. The problem is same for both the teacher and student. The, teacher, the teachers can't speak Torwali while the students face difficulty in understanding Pashto and other non-local languages. I carried out my action research on the students of class 9 and 10 of government high school Kedam. So you can see uh, how I did my research. I distributed some questionnaires and then I just uh, make an open discussion with them in Urdu, English and other languages. And also I distributed some questionnaires and they are solving in Turwali and Urdu and English. So I'm just uh, uh, just getting their uh, power of understanding that what in what language they can understand better. So here 
as a classroom and a non torwali teacher is in and i am just uh, this is a just uh, uh, evalu uh, evaluation of non torwali teacher in my school what i did for my research so here first of all i sit, uh, started observing my student during my classes and also i visited the teachers when uh, the the classes when other teachers were uh, taking classes the non uh, torwali teacher secondly i tell you all the previous and recent tests and exam results of the student on which i was doing my action research to analyze their reading skills in different time periods i asked my student face to face for the problems they were facing during their studies especially on understanding teacher i prepared some questionnaires and simple survey form to distribute among all of my targeted student teacher and also parents i use multimedia to show the importance of multilingualism or multilingual education to the to my students because in in such areas in such indigenous areas people they just you know they they are just uh, trying to learn and to to teach things in english and at the same time they they don't know how to teach in english because english is a very foreign language for us i use multimedia for this purpose i also use audio recorder to collect the data from my students i did face i did face to face meetings with parents and community members as part of my research because uh, like it was my research if i will i were not doing anything with parents or the community people so my research was not uh, un uh, incomplete because you know i like uh, at that time i just thought that i will involve community teachers and my students so findings after doing this uh, research for around uh, one month or so i what i uh, uh, i found i found that the students of government high school kedam who speak a special language torwali can easily read and write in their mother tongue after uh, conducting my research i reached to the conclusion that if a student will read in his her first language mother tongue can give better results not only his mother tongue but also in second and third languages first if they will learn if they will understand things so then they can just uh, apply with with the other languages too the main things in uh, is an idea the main things i thought and i found that the main thing is an idea if a student will get an idea in a better way he will implement in a better way and 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 this is what a student can get ideas better in their mother tongue for getting any idea a student will need to think and think in their mind so if you are getting a better idea you have to think they will only understand if they will understand the concept so mostly it's like a a a, a natural thing that if something is come in your mind so you have to think in your mother tongue not in in a foreign language after a completion of my research i have concluded that the students in my schools will perform better if the education department will provide arrange local teachers for the school who can make the students better understand in their mother tongue as the focus on torwali students my research was was very useful uh, to other languages uh, to other language uh, minority groups of swat and elsewhere in pakistan because like it's a uh, a uh, 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 um final thing that like if you are uh, giving if you are learning things in your mother tongue so you can give better, better results and did my research added to the growing body of uh, empirical research that the the support um, that support the development uh, support the development of mother language teaching program in indigenous communities worldwide in addition to uh, the interest i have received from other teachers in pakistan my research has been of great interest to my international colleagues in australia and the united states and uh, after that after doing all my research uh, i just sat with other teachers uh, not only in my schools but elsewhere in the torwali community and i visited the gauri community which is another uh, uh, minority language or indigenous language in the swat area and uh, i visited them and then like uh, we reached to uh, uh, an end and we 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 uh, we got some recommendations that uh more uh, schools in torwali speaking areas to increase literacy rate so this is a general thing like if 
there will be schools so people uh, can uh, learn things and the literacy rate we can increase the literacy rate either in surwali paisto urdu english whatever but first we have to like uh, know how to read and write things and without uh, establishing of institution this is impossible yeah. appointment of new to left uh appointment of new torwali teachers and torwali belt and inclusion of torwali language in course of study teacher training for local teachers like how to teach in torwali because mostly we are getting trainings from british councils from uh, any uh, like uh, american in institutions from australians and they they just uh, they just uh, they they teach us that and how you can uh, teach the student in english but no one so far did this that like how we need to teach our student in their, their mother tongue so this is a, a, a problem and here i recommended this um a provision of teaching materials aviates and torwali so mostly everywhere in the area and recently i shared some uh, a posters with my friend jaclyn troy and some other people that we got recently our school just started a high classes and we got all the posters and the banners uh, uh hanging here and there and all are in english urdu right so if we will put something in torwali so the student will learn better and they can understand like what is this and community engagement community engagement with schools teachers parent council so we have teachers parent councils we we got teacher parent councils but their main uh, purpose is like uh, uh, the basic uh, uh, needs or infrastructure of the school no one uh, talk about the mother tongue or the importance of mother tongue so we have to involve teacher parent councils to like uh, to improve uh, uh, mother tongue in schools or to to encourage the teachers and the institutions to teach in their mother tongue engagement of international organizations so this is Uh, uh, a very important part and it's a need of time that international are you, you know like pakistan and then uh, our area sawad and then bahrain we are we are kind of the top marginalized people like it's very difficult to reach an uh, international organization or international institution or international friend to help you so this is a recommendation like uh, through this is a, a very good forum F fel a very good forum and i understood too many things and i learned a lot from my last conference in sydney so uh, it's a, a very important thing that we need to engage some international organizations in this process and local schools are with, 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 with like it it could be departmental like uh, some uh, like from australia they can connect with our education department or pakistani embassy like to do things like that and exchange programs among indigenous communities for uh, teachers and students so uh, i did a uh, uh, exchange program last uh, not not last year but in 2018 in in the united mm -hmm. states yes. it, it it was in 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 america so the same things uh, we need to do for our indigenous communities providing research opportunities for college and university students so we we need to like uh, these international organization or the stakeholders they need to provide some research opportunities for torwali and other indigenous students in universities and colleges uh, like uh, to to work on how to teach in their mother tongue so here are some uh, references for uh, for my research and my research study and also uh, we will uh, finish our paper so here are some recommendations of what uh, we read for this research and i have read some thing from australia and then uh, uh, pakistan and then i have uh, i have the the, the best uh, reference is here uh, which is me mujahid torwali i develop a trilingual uh, um, a daily usage conversation for my students and which is very famous in the area and 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 people are demanding day by day and other my friends zubair torwali he is also working on torwali language and he wrote an article the language of education in the news international in 2016 i just read that so thank you very much for your time and i hope that you got a little bit from uh, my presentation and if you have any questions so uh, me and professor try are here thank you very much thank you jacqueline and mujahid um we need to get the um 
screen sharing of <clears throat> so um, we have uh, time for questions um, just checking the the chat um, Uh, so, uh, Julia Salabank, uh, would you like to ask your question? Unmute. Okay. Yeah. So it's a um, moral comment. Um, I mean, it's it's great. You're, you're, it's really really interesting. Um, but it's 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 not necessarily a new finding that that children learn best in in mother tongue. I mean, UNESCO has been promoting this since 1955. Um, so I just wonder why it is that we have to do this again and again. Jackie. Oh, I was going to, I was going to, sorry, I don't know if Majad, is Majad still there? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm here. You can, you yeah, can answer, yeah. no problem. No, no, you go ahead. Yeah, 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 you, you do it. Well, I, I, I must say that um, it's been a, a strange experience in engaging with what Mujahid was researching for his um, thesis last year and the year before to, to, as you say, to think that we have to keep going over what seems to be absolutely obvious that um, if you don't understand something, you're not going to learn anything. <laughs> and even in Australia, I can remember being in a school in... Um, the Northern Territory, where um, an Aboriginal student was being treated as an idiot, basically, by her teacher. And um, the local um, Aboriginal educational assistant came along and explained to the child in her own language, one of her 12 languages, actually, I think, was in that area there, highly, multiling highly multi multilingual. Um, and the kid got it instantly. Um, it was... Uh, a matter of learning something mathematical and it was just explained and then the child shot ahead and it was seen to be surprising um it just it's extraordinary i've been in um ulpan as they're called in israel where i saw um students who were um non-hebrew speak non-israeli or hebrew speaking um yemani people um being yelled at by their language teachers because they couldn't understand what was being said to them. And to my and astonishment, Jackie, they can, were... Uh, can Sorry, I just what? put a comment? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, uh, we, 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 we are not against of multilingualism. Uh, by the way, we are doing this MLE, M multilingual education system through SIL. Some of my friends are working with them. So we are in very favor of multilingual education not only in mother tongue, but we just want this mother tongue a bridge between uh, the, the, the second and the third language. For example, if we will understand thing, uh, things and Turwali, then we can bridge them to Urdu and then English. But unfortunately, people are just starting in English or Urdu. And I will give you an example. Once I entered to my classroom and there was written river, river, right? River and Urdu, it means Darya. So I asked the student, what does river mean? So they said, Darya. And I said, what does Darya mean? So they said, mate, plastic mate, which is actually, Darya means uh, a river, right? And the other <laughs> name, Darya and Torwali, we call a, a, a plastic mate. So it was a confusion that the, the student was just uh, uh, like a, uh, a memorizing things. And they said, river means Darya. And I said, what Darya means? So Darya and Torwali call not, not a river. And they said, Darya, uh, a mat, plastic mat, because in Urdu or in uh, uh, also in Torwali we call Darya a plastic mat. So they they got river. A, a river means a plastic mat. So this is kind of very confusion, right? So we have to make them understand. Of course, we 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 need to teach them in English and Urdu and other languages. But first, we have to make them understand in their mother tongue. So this is what I was saying. Thank you. I'd, I'd, I'd like to add that um, Majayad is working towards developing a, a doctoral pro proposal um, for whatever lucky university gets him. I'm hoping it'll be Sydney. That's why I'm doing this advertisement. But um, he's, um, he is also working on how to explain um, 
grammar to his Tawali students, if you like. And um, in he was, uh, tell them the story about the intransitive Mujahid. That was a lovely, not intransitive, sorry, the um, passive voice in um, explaining that, the English passive voice to your students. That was lovely. And he got the students to workshop it. <laughs> Mujahid, are you there? Yeah, I will share. Can they, can you hear? So uh, it sounds like there may be a problem with connect connectivity there, but um, basically what I will tell you, because it's a lovely little anecdote. So it's not only just, it's not only the understanding of, I guess, all your learning, but it's also the understanding of how to learn another language. So trying to teach, um, somebody to learn another language without using the language they already know is a kind of extraordinary exercise as well. But he, um, the passive voice in English, he sent his students home to workshop that with their family. And came, they came back with this suggestion that the passive voice was the shy part of English <laughs> that kind of kept things quiet. And I thought that's a really lovely way of um, explaining that. And we do have a, a PhD student who's a Nyampa woman from Western New South Wales in at the Australian National University, Leslie Woods, who is currently working on how to describe how her language Nyampa works to the Nyampa community who are not trained as linguists. And in the process, they're developing their linguistic knowledge um, very effectively. So this is something else that Mujahid is doing with his students, his lucky students. <clears throat> um, we have uh, this one question and one comment. Um, a question from, I don't know if I'm getting this right, uh, from Ija about MTMLE or MLE in your study. Yeah. Mm. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. I have been uh, well in in uh, Thorwali, but is it based on empty based MLE means mother tongue based MLE or multilingual uh, education? This is the different practice. For example, if you teach uh, two or three languages, that's uh, known multilingual education. But empty based MLE means every subject should be taught in mother tongue and which uh, which uh, way you are using in your lo local schools or in your locality i want to know about this uh yeah can you hear me yes, yes. okay uh, like uh, we 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 don't call uh, in our education system in pakistan we don't call it uh, MLE MTB, right? Yes. Yeah, because like uh, we are having some other friends, they are running schools, MLE MTB, mother tongue based multilingual education system, right? So they are running this with SIL, some Institute for Linguistics. But here, this is what I want my, my other friends and Torwali teachers to use Torwali as medium of instruction, right? We, we, we can't use it as a, 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 a medium of course, like the course, they are in Urdu, they are in English, but we can. It's a poor connection, it seems. Dropped. Yeah, yeah, but I, mean, I think basically what he's saying too is that um, the other thing is that the Tawali students are not actually, um, they, they're not really um, I guess, guess monolingual mother tongue. Uh, my um, they, internet they is speak. making oh, problem. Yeah, okay, so I, yeah. I am, I am, I am living a very remote area, and <laughs> I connected my mobile phone to my laptop to attend this conference. Otherwise, it was not possible. So you can see, I have a mobile data with this laptop, and I, I really made it. It was kind of impossible, but we did it. So uh, this is, uh, in, our, uh, in our schools, I am trying to engage my teachers. They can, can hear you, can hear me? Yes. 
and my school yep. we are yep. 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 Work, we are practicing we are practicing like we need to teach to make our students better understand if there is nothing in written and their courses and of turwali but we can make them understand in turwali then we can bridge them to urdu and then english i will call it a kind of a, a, a multilingual system but this is what i will call not the education system or not the institution right okay thank you um i'm afraid we have to finish here thank you all the uh, presenters you. and and everyone who took part in the discussions um I, uh, the discussions can continue in the break room uh, for those who, who wish to uh, do so. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.